You want to know how to make a German accent? Don't worry, this is easy. I teach you. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. So a few weeks ago, I made this video of me reacting to scenes in Hollywood movies and TV shows with German characters that spoiler alert, in a lot of cases speak terrible German or even their German accent when speaking English is obviously fake. And I asked you guys if you'd want me to make a video about how to do a real German accent and I got a lot of comments saying that you'd love to see that, so here it is. Now I've been living in the US for over four years now and my American friends love making fun of Germans around me by doing a German accent and they all sound something like this for some reason. Oh yeah. Yes, that is wonderful. I will go ski in the Alps today and eat some schnitzel. Don't get me wrong, it definitely sounds funny, but it doesn't necessarily sound like a particularly German accent to me. And I don't really understand why a lot of people do this thing where they kind of try to sound extra feminine in order to sound German. So let's go through a few different things that you should pay attention to when trying to do a real German accent so that you can either sound like cis or you can also have a lighter German accent like this. Now we're going to focus on having a German accent while speaking English, but this will actually also help you with your German accent when speaking German as a second language, because it all goes back to Germans applying pronunciation patterns from their native language to the foreign language. And when you're aware of these patterns and pronunciation rules, you can actually sound more like a native when speaking German as well. A lot of these things go back to sounds that exist in the English language but don't in German and therefore people who grow up speaking German as their native language oftentimes struggle making these sounds. And one of those sounds is the English TH. Many, many Germans can't really pronounce that and instead will either replace the TH with an S or a Z sound, as in this is the best weather of the year, or with a D sound as in this is the best weather of the year instead of this is the best weather of the year. When I want to imitate a really strong German accent, I usually do the first one though. Another sound that we don't have in German is the English W sound, the where you really don't even touch anything with your lips or teeth. And this one is definitely easier to learn than the TH, but many Germans still struggle with it and therefore just use the German W sound, which is the same as the English V sound. So it's V. So if you want to do a strong German accent, you can say things like what a wonderful day with amazing weather instead of what a wonderful day with amazing weather. Now, some Germans are totally capable of pronouncing the English W, but they falsely assume that in order to sound more English and less German, they should avoid the German V sound at all times. And they don't realize that the English V is pronounced V as well. So then it oftentimes happens that Germans will pronounce both W's and V's as the English W, ooh, so they would say the volume of the TV is very loud instead of the volume of the TV is very loud. I hear this a lot with the word very, so to all Germans watching this, don't be afraid of the V sound. It does exist in English as well, you just need to know when. W is W as in where and V is V as in very. Another tricky one is the English R. The German R is pronounced like this, R, which of course is really hard to make for everyone who learns German as a second language, but believe it or not, to us, the English R sound can be tricky too. Especially for people who learn English later in life, which is why you'll sometimes hear German immigrants who came to the US decades ago still use the German R sound. So if you want to sound extra German, you can just pronounce all R's the German way, if you can not pronounce that, and say something like, these are really great red roses instead of these are really great red roses. And as you could hear, I didn't really pronounce the R in the word R at all, which is also something that Germans do in German a lot, especially when words end on R. It's kind of what you would do in a British accent too. Instead of car, Germans might say K. Now, some Germans who can't pronounce the English R, but can pronounce the W, will then try to replace the R's with a W sound because they think it's the closest sound to an English R, and they'll say things like, these are really great woes. This is also kind of like what native English-speaking kids also do when they first learn how to speak, so it's kind of like, like, 
English baby language in a way. The next thing is that in German, we don't really make a difference between a D and a T at the end of words. I've mentioned this before in my false friends video. Germans usually pronounce a D at the end of a word as a T, whereas in English, that is a very big difference. So instead of brand, Germans will say brand. Instead of crooked, Germans will say crooked. Instead of the name Ted, Germans will say Ted. You get the idea. So if you do that with all of your D endings in English, you'll already sound a lot more German. You can do that with other word endings too, by the way. So just pronounce them more harshly than you usually would and devoice them. So instead of saying Germans, say Germans. Or instead of cars, say cars. Or if you apply the R rule as well, say cas. This applies to other endings too, like a G ending. You can say dog instead of dog. Now let's talk about vowels. German vowels, like in most languages, just make one sound per vowel, one sound per letter. The German vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. Now, the reason why I'm putting so much emphasis on this is that even though you might not realize doing it, English vowels are actually diphthongs for the most part, meaning that for one vowel, you actually make two sounds. So you move your mouth while saying them. Like in A, see my mouth moving? A. Then E is pretty straight, like you don't move your mouth here, E. But then you have I, O, and U. So in order to sound more German, you'll need to pronounce your vowels more like just one letter, just one sound, straighter, as I like to describe it. We do use the word okay a lot in German, for example, but instead of saying okay, like in English, we tend to say something like okay or okay. Or you'd say hello instead of hello, or paper instead of paper. Germans also tend to pronounce their vowels pretty short, like saying cat instead of cat, and they might replace some of them with the German sound, like say end instead of and. We just use the German E sound instead of an English A. Or Germans might say ambition instead of ambition and just use the German A instead of the English A. My last major pronunciation tip in order to imitate a German accent is about the L sound. Now in English, there are two different L sounds, a dark L that is pronounced more in the back of your throat, U, and a light L that is more pronounced with the tip of your tongue as in telephone. In German, we don't have the dark L at all, so if you just replace all dark L sounds with a light L, you'll sound a lot more German very quickly. So instead of saying, I need to call all of my middle school Latin students, you'd say, I need to call all of my middle school Latin students. Now that was with only the L part of the accent. If I do the whole accent on the sentence, it would sound like this. I need to call all of my middle school Latin students. And last but not least, let's talk about grammatical mistakes that Germans tend to make in English, because it's not just the pronunciation that makes an accent authentic, it's also the way that people phrase things. I actually made a whole video about mistakes that Germans should avoid when speaking English. I'll link that down below. So basically, if you just go through that and then make all of these mistakes that I told people to avoid, you will sound pretty German. One thing I mentioned in there is that Germans can't really tell the difference between the word since and for, as in I've lived here since 2016 versus I've been living here for four years. Germans tend to always use since. Another thing is that English has some uncountable nouns that we don't have in German, and therefore Germans tend to use plural forms of these nouns that don't actually exist in English. An example would be the word information, for example, or also the word hair. Germans might say, I need some more informations, or I'm getting my hairs cut. What I didn't mention in that video is that Germans tend to use the verb to make in context where you wouldn't really use it in English. So if you just use that word a lot, it'll help you sound more German too. Just say something like, I have to make a photo instead of take a photo, or to make sport instead of to play sports or to exercise, or I'm making vacation instead of I'm on vacation, or making the apartment clean instead of cleaning up the apartment. In general, just replace the verb to do with to make every now and then and you'll sound pretty German. Another thing that Germans struggle with are English time modes. We don't have a progressive form in German, for example. So I'm going instead of I go. And Germans actually tend to use the progressive form way too much and will say things like I'm living in Germany instead of I live in Germany or I'm going to the University of Cincinnati instead of I go to the University of Cincinnati 
only when they just mean to attend. So overusing the progressive form is one thing and then Germans also use the present tense a lot. For example, instead of using the present perfect progressive, as in I have been living here for four years, Germans might just say I live here for four years or actually they would say I live here since four years. And we also like to use the present tense instead of the future tense because that's also what we do in German. So instead of saying I will go to the movies with you tomorrow, we'll just say I go to the movies with you tomorrow. Or instead of I'm going to apply for that job next week, Germans might say I apply for that job next week. And last but not least, Germans oftentimes make statements and then turn it into a question by adding the word oder, meaning or at the end. You can do that in English too, but you'd probably add something like right, as in you're in fifth grade now, right? Or you're in fifth grade now, aren't you? If you want to sound German though, just add the word or to the end of your sentence and say you're in fifth grade now, or? The last point that's probably pretty important to know is how to pronounce the word German or Germany with a German accent. If you want to do it really strongly, you can say German or Germany. German, Germany. We basically pronounce it with the O umlaut letter, Ö, which probably doesn't help you a lot, but just try and say German. Also, Germans tend to pronounce every single letter that's written down, so don't try to drop any word endings. That's not going to sound particularly German. And in German, we usually emphasize the first syllable of each word, unlike in French, for example, where they emphasize the last syllable usually. I think with these tips, you should be able to do a pretty decent German accent, maybe sounding something like this. And as I've said throughout the video, you can also do different degrees of a German accent simply by either applying all of these points on at once or only applying a few of them or by making some of the more advanced pronunciation mistakes. If you have something to add, please feel free to do so in the comments below. I'm sure there is a lot that I didn't even think about for this video, but I hope it was helpful for adapting a German accent while speaking English, but also for those of you who are trying to work on their German accent when speaking German as a second language. If you want to hear an American who learned German in 10th grade and totally mastered the German accent and actually now sounds like a native speaker, you should check out the videos with my friend Josh or check out our podcast that we host together you can find all the links down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And as you guys know, you can support my channel on Patreon and buymeacoffee.com. And for more content, just follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. If you want to see more of my videos on language and pronunciation, just click here and you'll get to the whole playlist. And with that, I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!